Most people in life are looking for how do I keep myself safe in America. Safe in America is recognizing where your rights in the world begin and end. When it comes to your rights, what do they take care of? The United States Constitution says that the United States citizen has the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Happiness includes a concept of self-actualization. Self-actualization is something that we learned about in psychology class or health class. It is one of the fundamental laws of being a human being, outside of the standard things that most human bodies have to accomplish in their lifetime. They have to learn to breathe and live. Humans have to learn to eat and defecate. Human beings thrive on being loved and having sex, which is healthy for the human body. When people avoid themselves of not being willing to partner in life, in whatever predilection that gives them the most joy and happiness, they are not as healthy of a human being in their heart, their mind, or their soul. We have a religious right that wants to insist that there's only two types of beings, a male being and a female being. And if that is truthful, then that is completely and wholly based on the soul. Because the concept of male and female is a spectrum. What is male to some people may not be considered male in a different country. What is female to someone may not be considered the same overseas where social etiquette social nuance and social mores are different. We already know that communication styles around the world can be incredibly different. How someone greets someone, what someone says to someone, how someone socializes before they get down to the heart and matter of most people which is a version of self-actualization which typically is about earning in this world. All of us have the right to earn and create a concept of service. It's amazing how people want to insult someone who says, how can I help you today or what can I do to serve you today? You see, the act of service is what we get paid for in our jobs and in our employment. And the act of service is exactly and precisely what a small business does in order to grow. We can have a business that starts out with one or two people. We can have a business that starts out with ten people. But either way, a small business is usually what helps the American society to thrive. Large corporations, of course, help to provide for us the material goods that our families enjoy. It takes someone in a different country to create an Xbox or some sort of alternative game program because we are not the leading exporters of those things. We are also not the leading exporters of technology in terms of cell phones, computers, or other things. We have to produce for our families the truth that the things that their children are going into the world and into schools and into colleges for have to relate to the things that we care about in the day-to-day -day aspects of living about in our world. In our world, it is essential that we keep our farms going. It is essential that we keep protective services in those rural communities to ensure that foreigners and infidels are not trying to ruin our food sources to harm our people. We also need to be willing to see that our farmers are at risk because what they tend to encourage in their children is the opportunities to learn and earn are often beyond their farms. Some farming families do create a legacy and a love of that life. But for many young children, it is a very hard life, a very disciplined life, a very stringent life, a very suffocating life, and a very, well, life full of strife and struggle on behalf of a lot of people who are thankless in our communities with the way that they handle food in its establishments of restaurants, grocery stores, and in the di dissemination of food products, food byproducts, to our people of the nation. There is nothing that I find more disgusting than visiting a trash can. In the importance of journalistic reporting 
and also in the ability to feed a huge flock of geese that is pretty much almost starving in a way not because that they've been trained to look to people for their food but because we have not considered that if they are not a protected endangered species that openly they are a food source for our families in certain places it's true that you can eat duck in a Chinese restaurant. It's also true that you can eat quail eggs and other things that most people don't consider natural to their constant use of eating. I know I have a late sibling that keeps a somewhat of a small farm, but they don't always keep their animals in the way that they set out to. They sometimes name their chicken, their hens, and their roosters and they sometimes use them for food but they use them as a fresh alternative egg source so that they don't have to spend as much in the production of their breakfasts at home they still spend a great deal of time caring for attending and availing themselves of that food resource sometimes to the detriment of their home and sometimes to the insufficient inactivity in relationships that they truly need to stay afloat in a sustainable world. We do have to have more people doing more personal farming in their own backyards. It is true that anyone can make a vegetable garden, just like in that marvelous little film called Ratatouille that was produced with a fairly unknown actor as the voiceover, but it created a marvelous show for young people that anyone can cook. We absolutely need to train our young children to learn how to cook appropriately, learn how to buy foods efficiently and effectively and economically. And we have to do that so that we don't waste food on the shelves and groceries. Now it's marvelous that a Eastern Illinois food bank in the community around in which I am residing at the present moment of time comes to certain stores to pick up their excess or just timed out food because we all know that food, particularly canned goods and other types of food, often will have an expiration date beyond its actual label or its date. That some things are good a good week or two after its alleged expiration date. But what happens to the food that is about to expire and never gets sold? It's literally put in our recycle systems, but is it put into our feeding of animal systems? Are the crackers that have gone kind of haywire and gone stale, are they given to animals or is that not good for those people? And is the lack of use of certain meats given to the crows and other things in our community that need to eat, that clean up the carcasses in the street and openly that are a part of our human, well, need cycle? You see, the cicadas and the bugs and the other things in the earth are coming in from foreign lands, and we may not be able to control what is being brought over illegally and immorally by foreign students and others that are not interested in keeping our communities safe. The more that I record as a reporter about what I see going on in restaurants, it makes me angry because they are doing wasteful things, filling our landfills in a way that is highly immoral. You see, when you have a plate that you're picking off a table that still has some food on it, all that food, that marvelous potatoes, those vegetables, those salad things, could easily be put into its own type of a bin. And that bin could be sent off to pig farms where they need to feed pig good quality foods. Where are the recyclers that interact with those farming establishments? And when you have meat that is still left on a plate that is not really safe for anyone else to eat, that could be separated out into a different trash bag. And that different trash bag could be fed to a lion or a tiger that is entertaining us and our children and our families at a local zoo park. The bones, of course, are not given to a dog today because they could choke, but are more domesticated animals that are actually international exotics do you still need to eat quality meat so that they don't go after their trainers and that they are always regardful of the space and the encampments and the enclosures in which they stay in, lay in, and play in. You see, when we're not thinking about proper recycling, we end up with plastics 
and other things in their mixing with food. We end up with napkins and fabrics that don't go in those spaces very well. So what I'm suggesting is that restaurants across the land who are getting benefits from these new packages that our President Biden is rolling out in terms of supporting restaurants that sort of got hit by the downturn, despite the fact that they're making up for every cent by increasing their prices by a good 20 to 30 percent already, they need to be held accountable for how they recycle our food. You see, if they set aside the french fries at the end of a day from a restaurant, all those french fries and potatoes could be used to feed the local geese population, the local duck population, that eventually, at some point, fly off and become a hunter's fodder for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Again, presuming that they are not a part of an endangered species list. You see, even owls need to eat, even crows need to eat, even eagles of our more indigenous spaces need to eat. And someone has to care for them like the DNR. That is truthful to a point. But most people in America, most children being raised through an educational system are not being funneled in an appropriate way. We're not taking our food-loving kids who love to cook and immediately putting them into restauranteering classes. We're not taking our military-oriented minds of boys and girls and immediately taking their athletic capabilities and putting them into law enforcement of different types that would fit their soul. And even when someone goes into an office for national security, our armies, our navies, our marines, our air force, we're not always double-checking with God whether or not their soul and their capabilities is right for that program. What really should be happening is we should have one style of recruiting office for the overall military that sorts and carefully evaluates which military someone should go into. And generally speaking, the benefits and pay packages should be fairly similar across the border. You see, we're still always going to need a U.S. military to protect us, not only in our domestic homeland, because police officers are not always trained to the same abilities, and sheriff most certainly are not, with regard to international human rights treaties and declarations, that they are personally, at this present moment, professionally, at this current capabilities of America, being shit on or shunned or opinionated against by the United Nations that says that they are behind in their understanding of how to treat a human being. The hot topics of the day that regard sexuality or regard a person's human body are somewhat immoral because thankfully in American society we are still walking around appropriately clothed in whatever fashion statement we choose to express our fashion on one hand, our profession responsibilities on another, but on the third aspect, it is our gender. How a person chooses to present themselves in a bilateral or binary world is their absolute right. If they choose to present as a man, that's one thing. If they present as another gender, that's a little confusing to our young boys and girls that don't understand that very well. But here's what we know about children. They're usually loving and accepting to someone who is loving and accepting. Adults tend to be the ones that train people to hate. And openly how a soul lays in front of the Lord as it comes out through the womb, and how a soul lays when it departs the earth and goes back to God is still wholly responsible to the Lord's house. So it makes a man who's a reporter, who's an a very well-versed individual in the concepts of God very angry is seeing people taking topics that are normal considered a part of human decency, human privacy, and human medical rights, and they're becoming fodder for a public sector that doesn't understand the topic at all and on issues that become hotter and hotter inappropriately in the hands of the general public who doesn't know the individual at all. Who an individual decides to live with, lay with, play with, stay with, as I often like to rhyme, is totally, wholly the individual's responsibility. 
how they choose to find an appropriate, affectionate life partner, whether they choose to procreate or not, is 100%, 100% the responsibility of an adult individual to pick someone who is healthy, wealthy, and wise for their life so that they become quality, community, service-oriented people that helps America as a business entity to thrive. Anything beyond that with regard to a person's genitalia that may not match their outward physical fashion presence is no one's business. This is an immoral statement to continue to allow people a letter of T or Q because anyone who has understood the situation where the soul is impacted in a way that the physical body has a private birth defect, we understand that the healthiest role for that individual is to transition, which is usually what the T is supposed to stand for. But a true transition is moving your position from one side of a coin, possibly to another, but in truth, it's going on to fully function on the side of the soul. And fully functioning on the side of the soul doesn't keep demanding that people recognize a middle ground. Fully functioning on the side of the soul says, I might have a spectrum of gender that is mixed, but I'm going to make a choice for my own healthy living, which side of the spectrum I'm going to truly stand on so that people around me know what I can become, not at all, so that people around me have the right to choose to love me, to honor me, and to care for me as I need my soul tended by other people. And if you're a boy, that's one thing. If you're a girl, that's another. But playing the middle ground usually puts people at physical assault risk because Americans and other people around the world are hateful at what the Lord makes. There are very few people who can successfully, unless they're a drag superstar or a drag queen who's on television by far away from the normal human populace, there are very few people that can pull off living in the middle ground with any form of safety without someone from a foreign land with totally different religious practices thinking they're going to harm thee. So when I talk about this topic, I'm taking it full circle, that our jobs as parents in this world is to recognize the human soul that God has placed within a child, recognize if there are any special needs in terms of birth defects that need to be repaired or healed, and recognize that we have a responsibility to produce a human being into the adult world of universe of working that is a success. And if that success includes some sort of hormonal rebalancing so that the child feels whole in their heart, mind, and soul, then that is our responsibility as a nation, as a society. But for people who want to play in the middle ground for notoriety, refusing to give themselves a real type of name, not that people can't have nicknames to protect themselves, not that we don't have players in the street like my buddy friend, uh, cool breeze who literally is a gentleman who's black and runs in a wheelchair that's automated it doesn't mean we can't have our nicknames and our player names of all types of walks of life but at some point at the end of the day a person is getting a paycheck or getting a social security check or getting served in a hospital as they learn how they're going to go to their demise with some form of disease or illness and if we're not caring for people by ensuring that every American has a rightful access to an appropriate hearing aid as the natural aspect of the human body decomposes and we lose our hearing sometimes, or if they don't have the access to the proper pair of glasses to help them see what's in their food or see what's going on in the world, that's really a problem. You see, corporations need to look at what they're giving in benefits and benefits need to include dental health, eye health, hearing health, just like any other aspect of health care. What the individual uniquely needs to be an established, capable, professional, successful person is what we're trying to rear in our children. So if we have a child who has gone through the unfor unfortunate indication that they've discovered that their soul is not matching their physical being, then it is an entire society's role, not at all, 
but the people who love that child, who live around that child, the responsibility to regard that child by the human soul that the Lord has placed in them. And sometimes that means there's a physical transition, a legal transformation, and a position of a community that says, I accept the soul of this child as boy or girl, regardless of what their physical attributes might be at this present moment of time. And we create a healthcare system that allows them to physically transition so that they can have a lifetime that is full and whole, even though it's naturally understood that like a monk of a foreign land, they might end up being sterile in terms of the fact that many human beings across the world do not have a physical capability of procreating today. Have I made myself clear in the concept of this interesting and political, often debilitating hot topic that when we have people who live out loud and proud, they often don't actually eventually produce a financial capability because they're too busy being something that is not a part of what their soul's code is supposed to become. They're too busy flaunting things of human sexuality or flaunting things of human body propriety that have nothing to do with producing a life in our world. Those topics are usually of intimate and private nature and should remain so to the point of actual physicality with someone they love, you know? But if we see a man or a woman holding hands, it doesn't always mean what people want to imply it does in our world. You see, there are foreign lands and foreign cultures that that is a part of their world. That they hang on each other, that they hold each other's hands, that they stick together for their own human safety, but because it's a part of the human need to be touched. 